But I've entitled this my message this morning, Saved by a Prostitute. We'll find that that happens here in the scripture. A lady by the name of Rahab, Rahab the harlot. But before we read our lesson today of the scriptures, the nation of Israel had been captives down in Egypt. During Joseph's time, all of Israel had gone down to Egypt to survive. And they'd been gone away from their land for over 400 years. God sent Moses in to lead them back to their land. And y'all know the story how that when they got off out in the wilderness, they rebelled against God. And God passed a sentence on them that they were going to die in a 40-year period. Those adults were because they refused to believe God. They refused to go over and possess the land. So they wandered in the wilderness now for a 40-year period. But it was now time to go on over and repossess the land of Canaan that had God had given to Abraham and his seed. They were readying themselves to go back and in doing so, our text takes place. They send two spies into Jericho. Jericho was the first city they took back across Jordan. All right. We read from our paper. And Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men, spies, to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went, and they came into an harlot's house, or a prostitute, named Rahab. And they lodged there. They stayed there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight, of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house. For they be come to search out all the country. And the woman Rahab took the two men and hid them, and said thus, well, There came men unto me, I wish not whence they were. I don't know where they're at. And it came to pass about the time of the shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whither the men went, I would not. I don't know where they went. Pursue after them quickly, for you shall over, you'll catch them if you'll take off after them now. She's not telling the truth, is she? But she had brought them out up to the roof of the house, the two spies, and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them the way to Jordan unto the fords. And as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came up and up unto them on the roof. And she said unto these two men, Bill, I know, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, even this land, that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt. And what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites, which were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt 
Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you and your God. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Now therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, I hid you, that you will show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. She said, now, hey, I saved you guys. I want y'all to ask of your God and save me and my family, which obviously was a, a good thought. <coughs> Rahab was a woman we want to speak about today. God uses this woman to help carry out his plan. You say, wait a minute. She was a harlot. She's a prostitute. God's going to use her to save these people? Folk, oh, God has used men and women. <laughs> he still does. Even as sinners, he uses us, doesn't he? I saw a little deal, and I was sharing with Brother Enrique here a few minutes ago on the uh, <coughs> internet. I ran across last night how that God used some lines to protect his people. And if y'all want to read this in depth, there's several articles about this. There was a pastor and some of his followers, some of his members, were over in one of the Islamic countries. They had been captured by the Muslims and they were about to be executed until God sent three lines. I'm talking about the four-legged, ooh. <laughs> he sent three lines out of the woods. And they got a hold of one of the Muslims, and the rest of them took off. And they said the lions walked up to the Christians, looked at them, and walked away. Now that's reported as I read it. But God does use those. Matter of fact, we think of the, of the lions and God, we think of Daniel automatically. How that, uh, because... He stood faithful to God. He was cast into the lion's den. And God shut the mouth of those lions to protect Daniel from being devoured. But here God is using this woman who had taken a bad path somewhere in her life. Now, we could sit and try to analyze it, if you would. We don't, the Lord doesn't tell us what caused her to be a prostitute. It could have been, I said it could have been, and it, this was a case a lot of times, when there was no other way to make a living, that was a last resort, for some of the women of those days, especially in those days. We're not making an excuse for her because the Bible teaches it's wrong. But nevertheless, God still loved her. And he wasn't through with her. 
And he's now using her. She became a hero. If you would, look at Hebrews 11, verse 31 on your paper. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them, the people in Jericho, that believed not, when she had received the spies with peace. God saved this woman, and she's in the museum of the book of faith, Hebrews, we refer to that, the 11th and 12th chapter particularly as those heroes are mentioned and named. And she's one of those named because she helped the nation of Israel. She believed in the Lord. If you will, look back at your paper there, right in the middle of your page, verse 9 through verse 11. She said unto the men, I know that the Lord had given you the land and that your terror is fall upon us, that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. And we have heard how that the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed, they said, she said simply, we've heard and we know about your God. And it makes us tremble, makes us faint. She believed what she had heard about God. Amen. Hoke, I believe she became converted. I believe that prostitute part became a part of her past. And she was not currently into that anymore. Nevertheless, God used her as an instrument to fulfill his plan for his people. We find that Rahab, as she asked for mercy, look at verse 12. She said, Now therefore I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my father's house, and give me a true token. The Lord rewarded her with mercy. So we'll look right down further toward the bottom of your page, Joshua 6, verse 17. And the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein, to the Lord. Everybody's going to die. Only Rahab the harlot shall live. She and all that are in her house, in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. She saved the lives of our spies that went into the land. Therefore, when Joshua and Israel charged the people in Jericho, they came to this place, this house, that was a scarlet cord hanging. In the front of the house. And God had told the soldiers from Israel, don't touch that house or those that are therein. He also told those ones that were in, don't go out. Because if you go out, you're going to get killed. Stay in. A scarlet cord, mind you, hanging from the house. What is the significance of that? It's 
Scarlet is a color of blood, is it not? The scarlet cord pictures the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And when they saw that cord, we're going to go touch the folk that are there. That are, and folk, that's still true. When the Lord looks at you and those of you that's been saved, He sees the blood of His Son that was shed that covers your sin. God saved her family because of her faith. Now you and I might look at her and be kind of judgmental because we don't we don't understand people that would live as an harlot had. But folk God understood and he loved this woman and he used her above all others to accomplish his plan for the nation of Israel. So, folks, she was truly a hero of faith. She believed God. Amen. And folks, that's what you and I, that needs to be what's said of us. We believe God. I can tell you this, this morning, you can believe him when you can't believe anyone else. That's why the Lord said, let all men be liars, but let God be true. She was a hero indeed. There's something else that Rahab did Hadn't been mentioned as yet. Turn to the back of your page. Matthew 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ. The son of David. The son of Abraham. And let's, for time's sake, let's drop on down. Verse 5. And Salmon begot Boaz, also called Boaz, of Rahab. And Boaz begot Obed of Ruth, and Obed begot Jesse. Jesse was the father of David. But what this is, verse 1 says, The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David. And in verse 5 tells us that Rahab was one that helped perpetuated the lineage of our Savior. Verse 16, Jacob begot Joseph the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Some of us have been guilty of trying to trace our family tree as far as we can. Some of us, we kind of run into blanks in tracing our uh, forefathers. The folk has no blanks here. We have Rahab that God used to perpetuate his plan for a Savior. So we can praise the name of Rahab for helping produce us a Savior. God used her. Can you believe that our Savior was born through the loins of a prostitute? Well, she was a forgiven prostitute. Folk, all of us, you and I know that I've been guilty of something that ludicrous. On the other hand, 
<laughs> we're just as guilty as her. <coughs> because the Lord said if we sin in one point, we're guilty of all. We're all sinners. None of us can look down and know somebody else and look at all those sinners over there. That's what the Pharisees did, by the way. Look, look at all those Samaritans. Well, God used Rahab, the prostitute, to save Israel and help them get back and regain their land that they had gone, been gone from for over 400 years. More importantly, he used her to help produce our Savior and our Lord. He was the one that hung on the cross and died in our place because he loved Rahab and he loved you and I. So we can praise the name of Rahab today that God used her to give us a Savior. Right? 